Well, here I am in sunny Florida. Um, well, now it's sunny, being that our wonderful friend Milton, who's still looking for that stapler, uh, has come through and um, really, really messed a lot of people's lives up pretty bad. Did a lot of damage. It did, did really nasty things. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, afterwards, you, you know, you should have a plan beforehand. And, you know, I have somewhat a plan. You know, because in these days, you need to have a plan for a lot of things. And you should always plan on not having utilities just because the world we live in. And uh, so I have a 20-year-old uh, a generator. Yes, it's 20 years old. I bought it after the four hurricanes hit in 2004. Yes, there were four hurricanes in 2004. So all the hyperbole right now and hyperbolic talk about, oh, my God, it was two. There was four back then, and uh, I believe at least two of them were really nasty, and the other two were quite inconvenient, bad. One of them was Charlie, which was really a horrific hurricane. So, you know, I have this ancient generator that I don't use very often because this is the first time I've really lost power in a very long time, uh, and I just... You know, I maintain it a little bit, whatever. But it's 20 years old and it does weird things. It still has the original carburetor on it. And um, it has the original carburetor because if I could rebuild the thermoquad, I could rebuild this thing. This is cake. Except for now, when I was running, I noticed gas was pouring out of it. I actually noticed it during the night and I'm like, okay, we're going to let this let this fly for now because I'm not trying to repair this in the dark because that would be not intelligent. And I really do apologize about the, if there's any background noise, that's my generator. My garage is pitch black. My house is not that bright. I don't have a back feed or, or, or a transfer box or anything because my house does not allow, the design of my house doesn't allow for it. It would actually put the generator out by the public street. That's usually not a good place to keep your generator in any way, shape or form. Um, so it's back here and I run lines into the house and I power things that I need, you know, refrigeration, you know, air conditioning, lights, charging things, you know, things of that nature. So here I am and, and back to the, the fixing the uh, uh, generator. So it's leaking gas and like, okay, this morning I had to put gas in it and like, okay, it's pouring out. So as a mechanic, you know, you go in your garage and you have, you have the things to fix this. And if you don't, shame on you. You know, first was, it was, after I worked on it, it was hard to start, so I used some ether, as they call starting fluid now. Wow, that is so much louder once the windbreak comes down. Yeah, so ether, starting fluid, very important. Carbon choke spray. Any type of small equipment you have, always clean it with this because um, no matter how much you try to gas out, it will leave a residue in there. It's a mess. The other thing I keep around, yeah, I just realized it's like stuff I just used to fix it. I keep pickle jars because they're good at storing gasoline. They have a lid, safe side, nice wide mouth, you can catch all the gas. And I would smell this, but it smells disgusting because it's modern gas. It is vile. God, this does smell bad. Oh, well. But yeah, and this thing was this full, but I had left the lid off and it already evaporated out. Three hours. Uh, you know, the other thing I ended up using, I ended up using one of these Scotch-Brite pads to clean the surfaces. You know, it's pretty amazing when you, when you need, you know, when you're working on things, how something simple like this can help, you know. And then, of course, the carburetor was leaking at the fuel ball attaching to the the main body. The gasket had turned to dust after 20 years. So I um, had my gasket material. And if you don't have this in your garage, buy some now. 
uh, because this is really important to be able to manufacture a gasket. This is torque, so this is good for fuel fuel systems. Uh, there's rubber also you can use for um, also in fuel systems. It just depends where. They usually come in packs. I would suggest having I need to buy more, obviously, because I've made a few gaskets. And this will really save your bacon like it did me today because I don't have a gasket for this thing. I can't just call up and get one delivered. I'm in an area with no power. So, you know, you kind of have to rely on yourself. And that's one of the big things. You need to be ready for any type of situation. And making sure you have stuff to repair anything would probably be very important. You know, my garage, yes, it looks very crowded because it is right now. It's, it's too much stuff for a two car garage. But unfortunately, there are things in there like that gasket maker, like those jars that come in handy to come in a situation like this where I'm working with a, a generator that's, you know, should be going to college. And, you know, these are things that just have to. You know, I want to comment, what do you have that you keep around to help, you know, in an emergency to help make sure stuff works? And don't say a phone number for a mechanic. This is like in a situation where there is no gas here. And that's the other thing. The gas stations have no gas. My old cars have gas in them. And they are going to be used to help keep this thing running until I can actually start getting gas at gas stations. Because if you have old cars, first of all, make sure they're in a safe place. Second of all, if they're in your house and you're in a safe place, they're going to power your generator unless you're fancy and have a big tank or running on diesel. But this for me, now my all my cars are going to be storage tanks to keep my generator running so my refrigeration is still good. Uh, it, you know, these, these are things you have to think about. You've got to be prepped. I mean, everybody laughed at preppers, but you know what? They're the ones right now who are doing the best with this situation because if you don't have if you don't have power for days and you don't have a generator that means you have no refrigeration at minimum you, no refrigeration is probably the line i can't cross and you honestly need to really think about that when you're you know when you real if you live in an area like i do in florida where you can have multiple things happen where you don't have power you really should be ready for these things. And, and you know, the people that were prepping were ahead of the curve. They truly were. And it's amazing, you know, especially how unstable just things are. You know, in general, like the power grids are very, they seem very fragile at this point. I didn't lose power during Irma. Uh, and that was, the winds were about as strong. And, um, this thing I did lose, I did lose power and it went, and it's just because they just did a bunch of building here and they didn't really do much improvement in the infrastructure. But that's another story for another day. Uh, you know, I really, once again, I really want to hear about what you have around to fix, make things work. Uh, just curious. And uh, as always, thanks for watching up to this point. Um, you know, it's just an easy trying to make videos now because, I mean, I'm, I'm literally maintaining a, a generator and uh, making sure power is good. And oh, yeah, it's getting gas because that's that's a reality right now. And uh, I, but thanks again for watching this point. And uh, as always, you know, uh, like, subscribe, share, all those things, the little things I make for across the bottom. And again, comment. I love the comments. They're they're wonderful and the guys have been very supportive lately thank you so much because this has been you know this is a sucky situation at least my house is still here you know everything is still intact it has damage but that's fine it's repairable but you know these are you know at least everything's still okay but it's just having to find the best way to get through it to where you can at least keep some semblance of modern life and uh you know, hopefully I'll uh, catch you real soon. And as always, you have a classic car, take it out because it'll make someone's day, probably even your own. And I'll catch you a little bit later.